evening, Sacramento. This is Laura Rubalcaba with Sacramento Soapbox. It's good to be back in your uh, living rooms again tonight to talk to you about an issue that really is um, thought to be a joke. And this is, of, um, this is about Jefferson, the state of Jefferson, splitting the state of California into multiple districts. And unfortunately, it's not as much a joke as we think because um, there is a real stealth plan here to gain power. Um, and, and I'm here tonight to talk with a couple of people from Keep It California. I'm here with um, Glenda Wurtenberger, Wurtenberger <laughs> and Margie Jank um, from Keep It California to tell us about, you know, really what a real threat this is. I, I heard a little bit before and I became really concerned, so let's just roll yeah. right in. Um, okay, um, the state of Jefferson is uh, trying to take a lot of our northern Cal California counties and turn it into a completely different state called Jefferson. And it's uh, not a good idea. <laughs> uh, a, a lot of it is because I think they want to get rid of the one person, one vote um, ruling that we've been living under for a long time. Um, so. so a number of us uh, formed Keep It California in April as we got more and more concerned about what was going on. In uh, 2013 and 14, we did have um, one county vote against joining and one county vote for. And then, um, in, and then we had five boards of supervisors go vote to join the declaration of separation that the Jefferson people have. This After is awkward, that. but I need to interrupt because mm -hmm. I forgot to do the promotion to, to name our sponsors. We have two sponsors oh. on this show who help, you know, keep us going, and it's really important to recognize yeah, them. Yeah, that probably so, is. <laughs> so we have Pieces Pizza on, um, on 19th? 21st. 21st at, thank you, 21st between Capitol and N Street. And we also have uh, the... Humor Times by James Israel. Uh, so these appreciate their sponsorship and appreciate anything that you can do to support their efforts. So I want to get back to the show. I'm sorry that was so awkward. But um, I do want to hear more about this. Now I seem to remember they were talking about splitting the state into six. That was yeah. another proposition that was on the ballot or was going to be on the ballot, but I think didn't actually qualify. Yeah, and we're not really in danger. We're not really in danger of six now. They've really no, narrowed no. their their sights down to just splitting off half of the state into Northern Jefferson. Northern California, yeah. Splitting yeah. on and south of Sacramento, right south of Sacramento. And I mean north of Sacramento. And uh and then it will wrap around a little bit because their target counties have both Placer and El Dorado and above that, Calaveras, Amador, and Calaveras, Amador. and Alpine. So right here in Sacramento, like, it would be two different, I mean, states. Right next to it. And right yeah, in, in our region right here. Yeah. And so... Well, I don't think you would like it very much, um, primarily because a new state would would be in charge then of the all the water because all the water in Sacramento <laughs> comes from, from this north. area of the state. Plus, uh, you know, this area of the state is a huge recreational area for uh, people from Sacramento and from the barrier area. And it would be very disruptive. You know, that's you know, really true. Life. I actually am, used to work for the Central Valley Water Project that delivers mm -hmm. water from Kalamath and um, Oroville and yep. brings it down from the state. So if that became a separate state, that could really impact <laughs> to say the, the least. receivers on this other state. Um, but my concerns about this have actually been more political related to power balance in the Senate. Senate. Yeah, the, um, they, they want to um, it, it, there's other states that are involved in doing the same thing now. Um, New York and Texas. The Texas case was just heard this last Tuesday. Um, and the, they kind of uh, are, are doing the same thing and it's because they want to get rid of that one person, one vote so that they can count. Uh, they don't want to count anybody that's under 18 as a person or um, Yeah, you sent me the link to the article yeah. in the Sacramento Bee. Mm -hmm. Last week, yes, Supreme last Court 
to, to decide. They've accepted the case on one person, one vote. Yeah. And that the idea here is that currently congressional districts are represented by population. Right. Yeah. And so what they're saying is that they should be represented by votes, voters within that instead or of eligible voters. So if you've got a hundred thousand population and only eighty thousand are eligible voters, not actually the, acting voters, but yes. eligible voters, right. mm -hmm. then you're gonna have to draw that district bigger and those twenty thousand people that are not voters, and let's go through who that is because like you said, that's people under the age of eighteen. And of course right. we all know that that's people without citizenship. Mm -hmm. But that's also in a lot of states, um, felons who yes. simply made a state a mistake previously in their life and mm -hmm. you know, here in California, um, I think it's just people on parole. There's there's you, not a yeah, lot of limitations of placed in California mm -hmm. on our voters. But in other states, um, Felons are completely disenfranchised for life. Yes, absolutely. And so, you know, if you are maybe in Baltimore, where you have a, a large minority population that has been run through the prison pipeline, the, the mass incarceration, yeah. they're all disenfranchised. All of a sudden, those votes don't matter anymore. Baltimore yeah. doesn't <laughs> matter anymore. You're, you're worried about your voters. I mean, this completely, re, re, you know, redraws. This is, this this is it would be. And it, yeah. and, and it shifts it the entire a, balance of power in that article I read about shifting it to rural because in your cities you have more felons, yeah. more, felons people. Yeah. more people, more young people. Well, yeah. Actually, the, that's, that's been Texas' take on this. And it's a variety of what um, the state of Jefferson people are talking about. Um, basically, they are, it's plan B. If the state of Jefferson doesn't go through, they want to challenge the Reynolds v. Sims case of 1964, um, which set up the one man or one person, one vote um, for all the states in the Senate, not just in the Assembly. And prior to that, the Senate had two senators from every county which gave a lot of more power, obviously, to So now you're counts. talking actually about the state because you're talking about the Senate and the Assembly. Right. We're not and talking about federal anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. This is a ruling that said, no, the states cannot, in a sense, set up their government the same way the federal government does. It needs to have whatever representative they have, if it's one house or two, has to be based on population. Right. And this is really what our state of Jefferson people are talking about challenging. It's a say, it's kind of a variation of this theme in Texas. So then you would end up redrawing districts in California that would mm -hmm. look very different in LA. Yeah. Very, well, have very, the Senate very different. That would, that, you know, bills have to pass both houses. So you have the Senate with a majority of people from the rural counties, you know, that, and we're from rural counties, you know, yes. I mean, it's sort of tempting, but, but it really isn't fair. No. I mean, no. it needs to be by population. I mean, the reason this federal Senate is the way it is is that it truly was uh, uh, independent states that joined together, and it was a compromise to get the Constitution written to have that House represented that way. But a state is not independent counties that got together. In fact, right. the state forms the counties. Yeah. You know, so there's no real reason to be represented that way other than, you know, if you want to have the rural counties have more power. When you're talking about power shifts, that's exactly what it would do. So we do not support that, you know, that that should be done. But the one person, one vote is different from the state of Jefferson thing. Well, yeah. But keep it California is, a, is, is working on all, both of these issues. Right. Is that kind of what yeah. you're talking about? Because that's their plan B. If, if, and in fact, most people So really, let's talk about the, the state of Jefferson yeah. thing. Let's just yeah. ha hammer well, that out. So is that going on the ballot? Well, m most of the people in California, I mean, most of the people realize that it has to be passed by the California legislature and yeah. it has to be passed by Congress. And for sure, the California legislature is not going to pass this. I mean, they know better. But, uh, and so their plan B is to go ahead with this lawsuit. What the status is of State of Jefferson at the moment is that they are planning in January to bring petitions and evidence the from the these counties to the legislature. And uh, 
what we know or what our thoughts are about this is that there's really only one county that I think has a, somewhat of a legitimate reason to be brought there because their people voted for it in an advisory vote On the ballot. in yeah. June of 2014. And that was? Uh, Tehama County. Tehama. Tehama. And then the other five that I mentioned earlier, or started to mention, was um, where the Board of Supervisors brought it <laughs> right straight forward to go to the legislature on a majority vote, which... Let's, uh, let's talk about what's going on in the Board of Supervisors. Like, <laughs> why, why are the... <laughs> why would they do that? Well... Yes. And I, what gives them the authority question. to withdraw from the... Yes. California. That's what we can't understand, how they're getting away with that anyway. How, yeah, but but I don't like, like, I don't like how it's happening. Mm -mm. No. So, so no. tell this story. I want you guys to tell what's well, going on in these County Board of Supervisors meetings. Well, what you've a number, seen. A number of them. The ones that actually voted two to three a year ago was before we got involved and my our feeling is that they just really didn't have information from the other side that showed yeah. that the f financial feasibility of this is non-existent and uh, there was probably only people from the state of Jefferson in the room and you know maybe they favored the idea I don't know we don't feel we don't feel that they did any real uh, financial research on their own or they directed their counties to do it and then after we got involved, that hasn't happened again. We haven't had any Board of Supervisors vote to just join this movement on their own. In fact, some of them are thinking about rescinding. Um, Lake yes. County yeah. is taking another vote actually tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, they're, uh, because they voted three to two um, to join the, or to put it on the ballot but they want to withdraw that now and have the Jefferson people put it on the ballot. They said if they um, are serious enough about wanting to do this, that they should do the work of getting the petitions and putting okay. it, getting it put on the ballot. Okay, well so that's standing up a little bit. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> yes, <So. laughs> and, we, and we have been now to eight counties and yeah. um, to four, three cities. And uh, out of that, we've had Another county ended up putting it on, uh, putting it on the ballot for them, yeah. and uh, another county said they wanted to put it on the ballot, but they wanted to study, make their own financial analysis first. So we're hoping they might come out like um, Lake County and say, "Wait a minute, <laughs> this isn't going to work for us." Our mm -hmm. own research that we've done for the presentations at these other counties indicate that all these counties have between twenty and some even. 50% of their um, funding for the counties the comes from the California. state of California, and the schools are about the same, not to mention other grants and things that go to nonprofits and the police department and, and prisons? You know, Cal Fire for Prison. fighting fires. And the prisons are big employers, you know, uh, up What in about the hospitals? North. Well, they're not normally not, not run the by same. the state, but yeah. yeah. But there's just a tremendous Schools. amount of money in these counties that they couldn't really live without already from the state of California. So what is the mm. point of, of takeaway, in a sense? Mm. What we need to do is work together. And if there's still issues, even with all this money, there are issues. This is not a rich area. And yeah. we need to work together to build a 21st century economy for Northern California. What they have talked about is going back to mining and lumber <laughs> with uh, what they say are minimum regulations. Well, knowing <laughs> what else no they say about regulations, <laughs> it might be quite minimum. So we don't want that to happen, and, and uh, that's why we are standing up. We feel it's much more important that we work together and that we look to the legislature, and we've made contacts already in the legislature. We've had a meeting with, uh, in fact, you met on, in that meeting with uh, Kevin DeLeon, who's the yeah. pro temp of the Senate. He's very interested in helping us and some other um, legislators from the South and the Bay Area. And I think we have an opening to work together. In fact, one of the things I, used, I have said in some of the board meetings is I'd love to have all of us show up in Sacramento in all our different t-shirts and buttons and, and say, uh, we'd like to have help here with something. And, you know, stand together on it. In fact, one of the, you want to tell her one of the, 
couple of uh, bills we've already selected to work on. Yeah, um, the uh, PILT funding, which is payment in lieu of taxes. Um, when the state removes property for the spotted owl or something, you know, from the counties, they have to make payments for the taxes that they took away from them, from the land. So they were doing this, and they have a contract to do it, and we're doing it up until 2002 when So this is where the, the state takes this, this land out of kind of production for the county mm -hmm. so that the right. county can't collect taxes on right. it anymore. So the state is making payments in lieu of the taxes well, that the county... Do. <laughs> and they stopped doing that in 2002. <laughs> and they haven't done, they, they made a small um, token payment, token last, payment year. last year just to throw something back at them. But the payments haven't been made since 2002. So that's one of the things that they have um, that. Looking to restore those yeah, payments. We are. Yeah, Because we not are. having those payments is one of the things that's pushing this kind of yeah. extremism. Up. Right. We, right, yeah. And, you know, not. Because these doing their obligation, uh, the state of California. And mm -hmm. we have a bill, yeah. uh, Lois Wolk. Uh, she's the one with the PILT uh, funding. To, right, to support the PILT funding of the tune of like $19 million. Yeah, it's quite a bit. And then the other one is the uh, uh, Brian Dolly's uh, bill uh, about biomass uh, creating um, places to burn the, you know, get the dead wood and the stuff that's in the forest that uh, when you have a fire it goes up in smoke <laughs> and pollution and the biomass um, things that it would create um, employment opportunities because it would be right there and they uh, burn the... Okay, uh, so this is a new fire reduction strategy yes, that they want yes, to implement is. in the state of California that would mm -hmm. provide some employment opportunities up in those and areas as well. And help clean up the forest so there and, wouldn't be so much yes. fire more, damage when yeah. it happened. And it's yeah. more um, environmentally sound than just letting forest fires burn. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, that's a very progressive yes, piece of yeah, legislation. I, I it has been really going yeah. on, but we Scientific need to have it continued. Stuff. Yeah. Because some of the money has sunsetted, so we'll be working on that. And I know in Nevada County, we had um, RFPs out for, uh, lum you know, lumbering in, in the county that no company answered. And part of the problem is it's so expensive to yeah. take care of that slash and transport it long ways away to get it um, burned. So to have these biomass plants, in fact, Paso County has just put a new one in. Um, Do these near, bio, biomass plants produce electricity? Yep. I was mm -hmm. just wondering, because they sounded yeah. like they might. They yeah. Do, yeah. <laughs> they had that kind of naming. So we have, yeah. it has a lot of values, you know, jobs, electricity, environmentally better. And it, we could start having all the, the forest thinned as well as the slash cleared because it would be more affordable for companies to do that. You're starting to sound more like an advocacy group. Well, advocacy we are. We're group moving for more rural, into that. For rural mm -hmm. parts yes. of Northern California. California. That's what we're doing. To bring more sensibility <laughs> right. that works for work. Yeah, That's and to help the Northern counties because they do have a lot of problems up there with lack legitimate. of employment and they're afraid that their children, you know, there's no employment there. So when the they grow up, leave. they leave, you know, so it's uh, something that needs to be worked on in Northern California to help them. Or everybody's going to be living in the cities and it might get kind of crowded. <laughs> that will, that will happen. <laughs> now, we think yeah. there may not be another citizens organization group that worries about the whole district, you know, the whole... Um, the whole Northern Ge California. Yes, that, that region, which is basically from Sacramento and San Francisco kind of <laughs> north. going up. That's pretty With simple. Little, it's a pretty simple region. With a little bit of a flip down to Placer, well, El Dorado, and, and no that area. College. Because when you're getting into McClintock's district, that's right. all yeah. very rural, going yes, down the is. side on that yeah. east yeah. side of the well, yeah. state. Part of his district. Where the west side of the state is quite yes. urban. Yes. And when you're talking about wanting to send your kids to college or something, um, if the state of Jefferson happened, there are only two colleges in that area, and uh, Butte and... Um, 
Chico? Humble. Yeah. yeah. Humble. Chico and neither one of them are interested in anything to do with the state of Jefferson. <laughs> so there would be if they didn't go with them, there's no universities or anything that for anyone to go to school. And they each county gets their certain amount of money and the funding goes wherever each county decides. So if they want to put money into transportation, one county would have good roads. Or maybe and a lot of police. Put it into, yeah, <laughs> That's a good or if they want to put police. it into schooling, then you'd have nice schools, but no roads to get there. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's a little strange. It would be kind of Each county could just the do what they wanted. It so but far. it sounds like it's, it's probably not going to be going through. So th this is why you were talking about the Plan B, right. which is more yeah. of a legal s strategy, but mm -hmm. but you're you're advocating in the legislature about this as well. We will, but yes, yes, yes that because we they're trying to to get this in front of the legislature, right? Mm. Well, the yeah. no, and some the, of the that, legislators would be like, yay, and some of yeah. them would be like, <laughs> well, Plan B is would have to be a court case because it's yeah. a Supreme Court case, uh, Reynolds v. Sims. So they and that's a, that would that's be a, legal. A legal path, and then yeah. the, and then that, that court raises case is the in question. Texas, right? No, no. This would be starting from California. Oh. The state of Jefferson would bring bring this their court own case. their own suit. case modeled after the one that's yes, yeah, it's similar, similar, similar. Yeah. in intent, yes. Yeah. And uh, but it, this would be challenging mm -hmm. Reynolds v. Sims, which is the other one directly challenged the Constitution, but uh, yes, which then means be. if they well, that's interesting. It's you know. Legal things or court things well, are so you know kind of more difficult to figure than than just straight. Well, and the question then becomes: Oh, who pays for all this? Uh, who pays for a court case that could go on ten years or so, and then? Well, the last one when they split the Virginias, it went fifty years before they well, that, <laughs> got it yeah. all tangled up out. All so, the um, split tangled. It, and it is this really what we need to spend our no. state resources on when we no. have you know all kinds of? of you know, educational needs, transportation needs, yeah. fire, absolutely, the drought. I mean, we have this incredibly long list. Yes, mm -hmm. hmm. and uh, it seems just kind of wasteful to me to have to be going through this. But um, if nobody if you don't else, fight it. if you don't fight it, then <laughs> like we saw, they were plowing through those counties, and nobody was putting up any. Uh, objections until we came up and said, check your figures, please. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think it was Trinity that uh, went really through did, yeah. and, and checked all of their figures and they just said, nope, <laughs> that won't have anything to do with it. The highway patrol and the uh, all of the services checked and they went, without the California money? Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah. So hopefully we won't get to that far a part of it, but I think they're probably going to uh, take it all the way. And the um, the petitions that they're signing, oh, yeah, yeah um, children can sign it. Anybody can sign it. And uh, they in Amador County, the uh, one of the board of supervisors asked, "Well, how do you verify the signatures?" And they said, "Why would we have to verify them?" They said they live there. <laughs> So they, I, I don't know where they're going to get with the signatures. When they get them up there, they're going to have a lot less signatures than what they think they're going to be able to use. Mm. Yeah, they're really So we've got strange. about four minutes left. So, okay. you know, what do you want to wrap us up with? Well, think we'd certainly them. like to have people join us. This is a big job, and they're, yeah. they're, we need to have more people aware Who are calling of the challenge. And speaking well, we will at the Capitol. If, if these... Um, um, if the counties leave these on the ballots, we'll have two or three counties to run uh, elections in. And then, yes, we'll be contacting uh, the uh, Capitol and visiting the Capitol, and we'd like to have people yeah. that could do that, or even just write letters to the editor, that sort of thing. Um, they can find information on keepitcalifornia.org and uh, sign up and endorse and make donations and get lots of information. And they can also join our um, Facebook discussion Facebook. on Lots Keep It California. Lots of discussion on there because we have a lot of them discussing with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of discussion. So yeah. both those things, we'd love to have people join us. And, and even though they don't live in a county that's directly connected, I think uh, they'll pro they probably can see that it would have an effect on their life. Yeah. 
it, I well, just, the thing just about the water, you know, just the water, you said yeah. the water was <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, they would have control of all the water that comes down from Northern California. Mm, Not water, good. Water's life. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. is. It Two definitely minutes. is. Yeah. So, so. Um, let's see. It's been lovely talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. You both have done, you know, I mean... You know, I don't know how much time you put into this. A lot. A lot, yes. <laughs> a lot more lately, especially going to the different volunteer. board of You're supervisors. Not right. no, it's all in any yeah. way, no. in any way. And any donations you receive aren't paying you at all. No, no they no. don't. They Stamps. Just, yeah. we, we have Paper, uh, brochures. brochures and things <laughs> brochures, like that goes yeah. into, yes. yes. Yeah, some paperwork. But yeah. yes, we will need, you know, to really to run a campaign. So well, money is necessary. Well, any help we can get. It's about time to wrap up. I want to let the viewers know that we're doing a split show again tonight. We're going to have Lola Ellis coming on in the second hour to talk to some people from Black Lives Matter, uh, Tanya Faison, and some other guests that um, I'm not aware of yet, but I'm going to be watching, and I hope you will too. Uh, we will go ahead and go to break now, and we'll be back in just a couple of minutes right after this PSA. Thank you.